Hey, welcome to another segment of the New Black Leadership. The New Black Leadership, right here live in person. Sitting here with the co-host, Minister Michael Muhammad. My name is Gregory Sane. Would you stake your claim with Gregory Sane? Stake your claim with Gregory Sane coming to you live right here on intellectualradio.com. You made the best decision in your life if you tune in to this show. And I'm telling you, if I was you, I would call somebody, share this information because we have no equal. I know I don't have an equal. And I'm saying that humbly because most of what you hear over these precious airwaves is not of substance. And I plan to always bring you what it is that I think we as a community, as a people, as a nation, as individuals need to hear and then move out on with actions to fix whatever it is that's wrong, or that we're complaining about, that we're talking about, that we're discussing or debating. And to me, you know, it's always a lot of things on my mind. I had a video out there a couple of days, still out there a couple of days ago about love. And I was talking to people about regardless of what it is that's wrong, relationships, community, work, etc. Without love, it cannot be fixed. And you cannot be a good servant if you're not in love with the people. So today, I really wanted to talk about, and I know, Minister Mike, you probably have a whole lot to talk about on this subject, and I'm going to come right back to it after you give your smooth, cool introduction, you know. But what I love about it is you always invoke the spirit of Almighty God in the conversation right from the, from the start, which gives us the juice and the power of recognizing the Creator. Yes, sir. Thank you, Brother Gregory. Um, Always, it's a blessing to uh, be uh, coming across the airwaves uh, and to have the opportunity to share the space uh, with you, my brother and my friend, and with our producer here at Intellectual Radio to find uh, safe spaces where critical speak and critical thought can be expressed with regard to the conditions of black people in America and the world is always a blessing because like you, I am a uh, listener and watcher of black media and I have grown increasingly intensely dissatisfied with what comes over the airwaves in terms of black talk here in Chicago, uh, coming out of Chicago and going throughout America and the world, we have been uh, given a group of people who, for the most part, have been made to dumb us down with regard to how we process assess and analyze and come up with solutions with regard to what is going on in our community. And so we are fed daily doses here in Chicago on Chicago talk radio uh, with one exception pretty much uh, of people who are apologetic uh, toward those who inflict the most harm on black people uh, and so anytime we have an opportunity to present some contrast, and while our audience may be smaller than what comes over uh, the AM or FM radio at this point, what we have to say is a balance to what is commonly heard by the mass. And so that is in line with the divine order because when we recognize that we live in a world that was uh, been under the control of uh, satanic forces or in common parlance we say white 
male supremacy. This is a world society governed by the norms of white men. Uh, then we know that uh, truth, and spe especially the truth of black people and our relationship to this world of white male norms is not the common speak. And so it is a blessing um, every time we have a chance to come on air and juxtapose some viewpoints, opinions, perspectives, and critiques that may anger some people, uh, may, uh, you know, uh, offend some people, may, uh, others are excited and, and, and yeah. right in line with us, but s some of us uh, are not used to thinking outside of the box. And so, and we stop. right, so we, we have an opportunity to facilitate some growth because anything we say that is controversial being men who are rooted in a love as you spoke of a love for the creator first and foremost and out of that love a love for his people black people in particular then anything that we say that you are at odds with uh based upon the fundamental truth of it then it is a it's a trial for you not for us it's a challenge for you not for us it's a it's an opportunity for you to grow outside of the paradigm of uh those five domains we spoke about last week that gave you your frame of mind and your frame of reference to reality it is a opportunity for you to cut through the vma awards the bet awards the the olympics and all of the other things that are designed to make you believe that this world is heaven on earth when it is hell on earth for black people when you are at odds with what we're talking about then you really got to realize that you're out of you 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 drank the Kool-Aid as we say right and if you really want to get people to a destination you would want to know the way there mm -hmm. and the way there is the truth mm -hmm. and the truth is what is missing from those dialogues from those conversations brother Earl that people don't want to have so we would want to some people are comfortable mm -hmm. brother that's bad but being dummy down mm -hmm. and i that's why i come on here and i say what i say to you all and i and i really want you to call in and sometimes you don't have to because if you a good listener you fine and you being fed and and let me just say this we are not and anybody that say they are is foolish of ourselves whatever you hear that comes through us mm -hmm. that makes sense all that credit and praise belongs to almighty god mm -hmm. for instilling in us not just being bold mm -hmm. not just being controversial but really having the courage mm -hmm. and the true divine conviction to say what needs to be said and so I, I said I was gonna call this. I don't know if you can put this on the on the on the internet mm -hmm. on the website. I mean, I know you can because it's nothing bad. But the subject or the title of this show is called "Pissing in the Wind." <laughs> <laughs> Pissing in the wind. And let me tell you why. And and you tell me what you think. Pissing in the wind, folks, mean that I was, and I came up with this because Jesse Williams, now uh, Colin Kaepernick, mm -hmm. uh, Jada LePickett, mm -hmm. did I say her name right? Pickett. Um, I'm trying to think of all of those that have taken a stand in many ways that they have. And I'm gonna make a point that I promise you, you gonna really understand why I'm calling this conversation pissing in the wind. Mm -hmm. And the reason why, and Brother Earl, you gonna dig this too, because see, when you listen to what the brother had to say, and then the hypocrites, the hypocrites 
who just a few months ago, a month or so ago, you just had Muhammad Ali all over mm -hmm. the, the, the televisions, the whole world celebrated. Mm -hmm. You celebrated him because he took a stand. Mm -hmm. You celebrated him not because of his boxing, mm -hmm. but you celebrated him because he was bold enough to do what? Take a stand. And so now, now, and, and, and here go the pissing in the wind part, so you'll get it. And 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 I I I love the brother and the sister, etc. But until we pool our resources, Jesse Williams, your money, our brother, Kaepernick, mm -hmm. Jada, your money, and all the other black folks who are at the BET Awards, mm -hmm. at the Soul Train Awards, at, at this particular award, and all these functions, you are silly to keep waiting on somebody else to respect us that we don't respect ourselves and sponsor what it is that we need to do. We have to show that we can make a move ourselves mm -hmm. without depending on, and what is the government is, is a body of people. Mm -hmm. The government is not a spaceship. Mm -hmm. It's a body of people. We think it's the folks in office. That's smoke and mirrors. The real mm -hmm. government is the people, but we so silly not to know that we got to pool our resources. Millions and millions of dollars. Oprah and Mike and Jay-Z and Beyonce and Dr. Dre and 50 Cent and Michael Jordan and Bill Cosby and on and on and on and on and on. And what do we have to show for all of that wealth? We still waiting on somebody to fix the unemployment. We waiting on somebody else to fix the housing crisis. And we're not taking those homes and hiring uh, men and women who can go and fix them up, rent them out, and make them affordable for the poor. Mm -hmm. That's silly to keep waiting on something that ain't going to ever come. That's why I'm calling this pissing in the wind because <laughs> we still are not doing what we need to do mm -hmm. as intelligent people. Mm -hmm. And so, they, yeah, the brother, might, the brother might lose his job. They say he make over 19 million. I dare you you know, not stand up. It ain't about a flag, hypocrite. Because while people stood up for that flag and black men and women died, you know, fighting and was discriminated, did you say something then? Shut up. You don't have a, a, a voice with me. Or I don't have any respect for you when you look at the condition of black people all over. What flag are you flying in Louisiana where those people are suffering right now? How many of you all have ran down there to help them? See, don't get me started. That's why I say we pissing in the wind. You got people upset with the brother like, you know, I guess they're going to treat him like they did Mike Vick. Matter of fact, he might be ostracized in the next week, according to just some of the reports that I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. That that they so upset with him, not because of the flag. You know, when you watch the NBA and sports, and they getting paid all this money, and folks are like, he should be thankful. He should be blah, blah, blah. Man, you ain't gave us our damn 40 acres in the mule yet. Shut up. You know what I mean? And I, I just think it's so hypocritical. And But then the other side of it is us, intelligent people who will not sponsor our own movement. And then what movement am I talking about, Mike? I'm talking about basic necessities mm -hmm. to life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just retarded to me that the conversation is about, yeah, it, police brutality, but you can't run away from black on black crime and how we need to roll up our sleeves and go and address the issues in our community, the social, emotional issues in our own personal life, family life, Etc. And and I'm gonna keep going with this until we realize that don't worry about nobody else's yard, don't worry about nobody else's house. Fix, clean our own house. And that's just me, because I just think it's it's backwards for us. Yes, 
the, 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 and the brother said he's going he's going to continue sitting there or not standing until something changed. Well, brother, you're going to be sitting the rest of the season because there's nothing that if you don't see a redistribution of the wealth. And if you don't see that this paradigm or this construct and this capitalist, capitalist society is already in motion. So that's that's the retarded thing is they're not about to change this formula. We got to change our own personal formula. And where, where, where is our gardens at? Where is our farms at? You know, where is our schools? Where are our uh, 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 construction companies to go and build? Where is our social emotional institutions? Where? With all the money that many of these people are going to die with, half of them are going to die with that money. People talking about how much Steve made. I wouldn't care. He can't spend it. Not in his lifetime. So it's stupid to not pool our resources. I know, mm -hmm. but it's just pissing in the wind, man. I'm so pissed off, Brother Earl, because when I hear that, it angers me. 708, folks, 223-8953. But go ahead, Mike. 708-223-8953. Right here in the studio at intellectualradio.com. No better place to be than here. But what you say, Mike? Well, first, uh, while you're identifying us, we are on uh, www.intellectualradio.com, but we're also um, streaming live on Facebook at the New Black Leadership Coalition page, on Gregory Sane's page, and those of you who are part of the board of the New Black Leadership Coalition, your founders, uh, you can go in the group and watch us stream live. So if you have a problem with any one of those signals while you're watching, you can flip to one of the other locations, web locations, and continue to view this uh, program until 10 o'clock. So having said that, um, at issue is always a question of leadership. And so uh, just to jump in on the point you made about our brother, the quarterback, uh, Kaepernick, you know, the, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan gave us this phrase, uh, politics without economics is symbol without substance. And so whenever we have an elite athlete take a conscious stand, against one of the symbols of America, it is a trigger. And I want you to think about this, those of you listening, about how mentally we are programmed and how the mind can be programmed to follow a certain line of thought based upon colors, based upon words, based upon gestures, based upon um, symbolic images. The flag is symbolism. And so whenever a black person consciously, deliberately, or inadvertently, as in the case of Gabby Douglas, uh, who did not put her hand over her heart, uh, but whenever a person consciously, like uh, Kaepernick, takes a stand against one of the symbols in America, how do you respond as a black person? Is it a trigger for you to defend what that symbol is supposed to represent without knowledge of what it actually means? Are you a flag defender without knowledge of the true meaning and history of that flag. This is very critical for us to do in terms of self-assessment, because if we cannot assess our own thinking, we cannot really know whether or not we are being used 
uh, to our own demise or for our own advancement. We cannot assess whether or not we have become vessels of good or evil, instruments of God or Satan. If you are a defender of the flag and not a defender of the principles upon which Kaepernick stands, then you are guilty of ignorance. You are guilty of being a program to be an advocate of your own self-destruction because all of the history wrapped in the flag of the United States is tied to chattel slavery, which all scholars of history agree, chattel slavery, the, the form of slavery practiced in the Atlantic slave trade, once we got here specifically to the Northern Hemisphere of North, uh, this Western Hemisphere in North America is the most brutal, vile, heinous and evil form of slavery ever practiced in the history of servitude or slavery anywhere on the planet. And so the founder of that, uh, or the, the, the writer of the uh, national anthem, his family was one of the uh, most successful owners of slaves. He was one of the most effective makers and keepers of slaves his family was in the history of chattel slavery. And so he was, his family, he and his family were engaged in advancing practices, policies, etc., for the uh, perpetual uh, uh, maintenance of slavery as a standard of life in the United States of America. He was not an advocate for abolition. He was not an advocate for the freeing of the slaves. He was an advocate for the entrenching of slavery in perpetuity. And so if you go and, and read the background of the, and I, his name escapes me, but um, and maybe it'll come to me before we go off the air, but if you go and research he and his family, and what the meanings of the words of that anthem uh, uh, are in association with the practice of chattel slavery, you will understand how ignorant it is for the descendants of black people who were raped, murdered, pillaged, uh, uh, and suffered indescribable uh, atrocities to be proud to stand up and even utter the words of that song, let alone honor it, salute it, or put our hands over our heart to, to, to symbolize that, that somehow the very fibers of our being are dedicated to a song that represents something that is totally anti-Christian, totally anti uh, uh, uh the Judaism, totally anti-Islamic, totally anti any uh, body that has any higher form of spirituality. There is no way a spiritually conscious, elevated person who loves Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, Moses, Abraham, or any of those people can in their good, right, conscious mind honor that anthem. And so we need to be able to look at ourselves, look at the truth of ourselves and understand that <clears throat> we have been effectively uh, duped. You know, as Malcolm say, we've been hoodwinked. And, and, and that's why, Mike, that history <clears throat> is good for people to understand the hypocrites. So don't, if, if you're going to be upset, be upset with yourself. Now, I know he brought it right up into the modern times in terms of the suffering and and the things that are happening to black people right now the downtrodden well, the poor and the opportunities for those who are uh, mask behind of uh, the flag or patriotism and yet don't want to give freedom justice inequality some of the words that he used currently so i mean if you go back and study that history well most people are not going to do that because they would say that you know we have grown 
we I work for an institution that me I'm on the stage all the time. So I do stand up, but I don't have to sing, nor do I have to put my hand over my chest. I don't even know the black anthem. I mean, to be very honest, I mean, that might, uh, I don't know the words to it, but it ain't an anthem that I need. What I need is for us to understand that if we're not living up to all that we uh, can quote and sing, and yet, walk by people every day and don't feel any pain and how we treat the our, our fellow human beings then that's that's hypocrisy well you know and, and you know for me because i know that i wouldn't put myself in a corner where uh there are some folks would say well gregory saying you you work for the government the system I don't owe anybody anything. Well, and, and the work that we do is the respect. Now, we've been taught to respect the flag. I mean, so it's a difference. You know what I mean? That that the minister said, well, we should stand. Well, yeah, respect. We got to understand what respect is. And in, uh, you know, the work that I do personally, you know, a con I, frequently I engage men who have backgrounds of murder and brutality and I have to respect them for that background. Now that respect does not necessarily mean honor. That respect does not necessarily mean revere. That respect just means that I understand what you're capable of and so I must be prepared to respond to you in a way that is effective for what the way you think. Right. So respecting the flag, we need to understand what that means. You know, so uh, but the 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 thing that I want to drive at us, those of us who are listening and we must challenge our peers, we must challenge our coworkers, we must challenge our family members after we challenge ourselves to understand how deeply we have been programmed to defend the very people who never intend to give to us any level of freedom, justice, and equality. So while we quote the amount of money that this particular athlete may earn, we are blind and totally ignorant of the, the way capitalism works. Because if there are 30 or 40 uh, members of a team who are all earning near a million dollars up to 20 or 30 million dollars per contract then what we never are exposed to in the media is a breakdown of how is it the owners of these teams how do they derive at their living if they're paying out that much to elite athletes then what is left on the table that allows them to build stadiums that allows them to own jets and homes all over the world to, to turn profits in the billions of dollars. Some of them have hundreds of millions of, they're worth hundreds of millions of dollars. We don't ever focus on how we live in a world where generally white men are at the top who earn billions of dollars, but make us want to chastise our own for earning a few million dollars but having any sense of consciousness with regard to it so when you look at it in a broader perspective we're living in a system that is designed to make people dumb and make people servants of an elite class of people and don't know how to challenge them in terms of so for me mike it's is one of those kind of things where if they won't do it and can't do it, they will not. Mm -hmm. So live up. So Dr. King, our brother, was trying to get people to live up to what they say, what they sing, mm -hmm. what they what their creed mm -hmm. is. So when you look at all of that, mm -hmm. and it's some good stuff. It 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 sounds good, mm -hmm. and 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 it. It it but it does not represent the body well, of people yeah. benefiting. Right. So when you go back and talk about the wealth mm -hmm. gap and how the opportunities or what however he got the money, 
the billionaires that owns the team. Mm -hmm. And why is it that we don't, not, I, I wouldn't necessarily even want to own a team, me personally, but the opportunities, and even forget about the word opportunity. How do they get all this money to pay somebody to play mm -hmm. basketball, to play football, to wrestle, to play hockey, mm -hmm. you know, but then not getting off on that as much as do you, do we, do they, do whoever, are you living up to that? And is that the same equal rights that you sing about, that you're willing to give out, that you're willing to make sure that those opportunities, as the word you use, are for everybody that live under this flag. And to this very day in America, you gotta be stupid. Anybody that is upset with him have to be stupid. Everything that come on the news right now with Donald Trump and with Hillary Clinton and with the, oh, we got a call on, and with, with, with Barack Obama is about what? Black and white. What this one ain't doing, what that one ain't doing. We got a call on, how you doing, caller? How you doing, Deborah Vine? Um, make a comment on the last statement you just made regarding um, the uh, athletes. Um, you know, I, 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 my husband and I have this conversation all the time as we relates to our basketball, football, baseball, soccer players, and the enormous salaries that they that they have. Um, number one, I'm I'm in agreement to them getting paid what they get paid um, because I look at what the owners do. The owners make a lot of money. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Their bodies take on a, um, a tremendous beating, especially football players. You know, most of them, when they retire, their, their brains are like are like like scrambled eggs because they've wow. got so many hits. They're, they're arthritic all through their bodies. And, and most of the time, if they don't really take care of themselves, I mean, in terms of when the right things in their bodies are foods and exercise and things like that, and once they retire from the sport that they're playing, they're not really good for anything else, not not anything physical. So, you know, I think that they should get paid the amount of money that they get paid. Number one, because of the beating that they take. Number two, because the owners take crippled by through oh, what they pay them. Agree. Agree. So, You're doing a great job, though. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. And, you know, I and the reason why I mentioned them playing is because right here in the city of Chicago and throughout the nation, there's a big thing with how much we don't have this for a teacher or we don't have this for a mentor, but we can find money for sport and play, but for what, you know, we should have a whole, and I know you're gonna agree with this, you should never have to do a huge fundraiser for the work that you do with autism. That is absolutely true. That is you, absolutely true. You know what I mean? And so the yes. priorities is just, the priorities is off. And That's all. That, that, that aspect, you're absolutely right, especially as it relates to teachers, because teachers spend more time with our children one-on-one -on -one than we do. We spend eight hours a day looking at our kids one-on-one, face-to-face, teaching them nothing. If anybody say that they lying and the truth is not in them, teachers should be paid double what they're being paid right now. Yeah, I, and, I truly agree with that. And real quick, uh, before you leave off the air, I appreciate those comments. Just tell us, this sister right here, Deborah Vines is one of the voices and one of the uh, individuals in, in the state of Illinois that uh, works, I mean, unbelievably on behalf of children with autism. And she has a incredible son that is I saw how clean he was the other day, you know, on, on Facebook. But uh, Deborah, just real quick, can you just tell us what you do and if there's anything you just need to announce about oh, your program? Okay. Uh, my agency is Answer Incorporated, and we provide support 
resources, education, recreation, and advocacy for families impacted by autism and developmental disorders. Our primary goal is to service families in the underserved community uh, because resources in our community is very, very limited. That's actually the reason why we started the agency. So, um, you know, we, we do a lot. I mean, it, it, I can to even begin to tell you everything that we do in, in this little bit of comment of time, but I appreciate you letting me know that um, and the audience know what we do do. And we do have a fundraising event coming up um, September 11th at the Carlisle Banquet, this Harlem Night for Autism. Oh, great. September 11th at where? Carlisle in Oakbrook. Okay. How can, how can people get tickets? Um, you can purchase tickets. You can go straight to our website at theanswerinc.org. Or you can call me personally at 708-296-5651. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you, Sister Deborah Vines. Keep on listening. Thank you. Well, I'll be you keep up the good work. Thank you. And, and, and she's right in terms of going back to something you were saying, you know, the money that the owners make. And, and, but I, I just think for us, we, we fight in two battles. One is that a group of folks, and you mentioned the the, um, the 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 norm, you know, the norm system, the norm of those who have ruled um, this country or the world, and th that 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 norm or even values now that we have adopted and taken on. Right. So, yeah, you know. Two points. The first quick point is Kaepernick is in a great tradition going all the way back to, wow, I mean, uh, it's on record that Jackie Robinson himself said that he could not honor the Pledge of Allegiance and the uh, National Anthem. Uh, and Jackie Robinson by no means was radical going all the way up until you know, LeBron and Chris Paul and those guys that stood on the stage and made their statement. Um, but if you look at the history of athletics, um, if you remember Craig Hodges, if you remember uh, Abdul Rahim uh, from the NBA, the, these were gentlemen who were uh, white ball, not black ball whiteballed out of their profession because they took uh, the chance to express their, their 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 religion you know that that was a religious thing but it was it it, it wasn't a, a white person expressing religion it was a black person uh, expressing a religion that is against the culture of the white man who control the NBA and and if you really look at the ownership of most of national basketball and national football, uh, the overwhelming majority of our owners are white Jewish males. Uh, and so you can take from that whatever, whatever uh, history and facts uh, will educate you to take from that. But my second point, more importantly, is this, because our effort is to build a leadership coalition those of us in leadership in the community, like the sister who just called, like the members of our coalition, like those who are out there purporting or attempting to provide leadership for the community, we must constantly guard ourselves from being victim to this social norm called capitalism. And what that means is if 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 I have to be paid to protest, if I have to be paid to organize, if I have to be paid to come in the room with people that even the people I get along with, sometimes there's some of us, you can't get us to come in the room on a consistent basis together, even when we get along, unless there's a trail to a pot of money. You know, you can't get us to pool our resources, even though we claim Marcus Garvey, we claim Elijah Muhammad, we claim Malcolm X, we claim this one and that one. But, but
But if you really look under the skirt tail of black leadership, almost at every level, most of us are most motivated by money above any other value that we express, claim, or articulate. And so one of the things that I'm committed to do is challenge myself and, and challenge others who make claim to leadership, especially over black people, we've got to understand that almighty God, the universe and the creator of this universe is bringing in a time where this ideal of capitalism will not only die a natural death, but it will, the forces of nature, the natural course of history is killing capitalism. And if we hold on to a standard of operation that is rooted in money and the need of money, the pursuit of money, and if there's no money attached to it, then I'm only going to go so far with it, then we will be unfit and unworthy to lead our people into a new reality that is the opposite of the reality that has destroyed our people. And so when we talk about Ka Kaepernick and this whole thing about elite athletes making statements on behalf of black people or just against the injustices of any people in America. Because the truth is, you know, if you really look at the history of Western civilization, I would go so far as to say that whites don't love whites. Because if you really understand how many white people have been murdered by some ruler, some king, some potentate, some wealthy landowner, some mad scientist who wanted all the money, all the gold, all the resources for himself or his family. White people have killed billions of white people under the idea that only a handful of white people should be in control of all the other white people. White people don't love white people. So to sit around and beg and plead and cry and pray for them to love us the way in our ignorance we love them is totally pathological. But we don't understand it because we're ignorant of history. And capitalism is, a, is the byproduct of the natural inclination of a handful of whites left alone to their own devices to come up with their thinking, a byproduct of a system rooted in their nature and their thinking that makes exploitation normal, makes exploitation. If you don't agree with exploitation, which is all capitalism is, then you must be, uh, there must be something wrong with you. And so if you can't understand that there's something wrong with capitalism, then you are not fit to be in front of black people. In fact, you're not even fit uh, to be in front of yourself because when you go to, to work and that corporation or that agency pays you 50 or 60 or 80 or 100 or 150 or 200 or 300 thousand dollars a year whatever your salary uh, uh level is don't you understand that if they can afford to pay you three hundred thousand dollars a year don't you know they're probably making six hundred thousand dollars a year on your off of your labor and your brain power and and so and so they make they they're you know so when we look at the teachers I mean, what what they what we look the, the kind of lies and deceptions that is practiced by governments, both municipal, state, and federal. If this is why teachers are not paid the way athletes are paid, and we're made to look at the athlete and accept giving our money and our energy to athletes because if you pay teachers what they work what they're worth and they actually provide quality education which allows people to dissect their society and how it works then we would we would people would rise up and destroy this paradigm on their own so you have to oppress teachers because by oppressing teachers you oppress the whole culture the whole population are oppressed by teachers. So it's better for us to feel good about a comedian, a singer, a, a, a basketball player, a football player, a track star, a porn star, whatever. It's better for us to feel good than to think clearly and be aware of the truth of what people are doing to us every day in the name of Americanism, in the name of capitalism. What profit an uh, individual to gain the whole world and lose your soul? And that's what it's really about 
you 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 can get caught up can't and shouldn't get caught up on being driven by materialism being driven by money and so black folks alike so we if we had the power would we be any different than those that we complaining about and so when you look around there's enough blame and we've been here too long now that we should be doing better as a community with the information that we have and i think that's the most frustrating thing to me without even you know you we can look at as you say the different levels of government and their irresponsibility when it comes to the poor but my work and my my focus as a new leader or as a a enlightened or thought leader thought leader as someone that really want to see the quality of life improve for anybody anybody that decides that they want to eat better and they want a different quality of what goes in their stomach they shouldn't be denied that they shouldn't be forced to have to eat the scraps mm -hmm. so what's keeping us from accomplishing that and so when we talk mm -hmm. about them and they mm -hmm. etc we know that history and somewhere else not we because mm -hmm. a whole lot of folks act as though you don't know but fine let's let's bring it up to where we are today and that's why i say when when um athletes and not so much the money that they make and the owners that really more so we that brother and the other brothers and sisters who are conscious so let your conscience guide you to invest in your community and until your conscious uh do that or don't do that then i don't think you really as conscious as you say you are i think you could be a conscious and protest but put your money where your mouth is and i don't know exactly not so much investments but what that brother or jesse williams or whoever are angry or whoever has a and and i, I heard what he had to say and what did nobody would disagree with what he said they're going to disagree with what he was doing because they don't understand and he wasn't basically he was talking about right now for what we seen and what we say when we stand up and if we had the words right here you would say does everybody have that opportunity is that just for a few then you got a whole different conversation then people want to say no 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 we gonna i'm gonna ask you again because you say that president barack obama that he wanted to pass a health a health care bill did he get resistance from the same people who claim to be patriotic and i'm saying well, that to say that i don't want us to get caught up on that as much as it is what's keeping us from doing what we need to do as intelligent people to motivate to inspire and to do for self well see the point barack obama in healthcare he met with resistance but the part that we miss is the nature of the resistance what he did through the obama healthcare what if we understand it from a business perspective is he enriched the healthcare firms in a way that they've never been enriched by forcing people to take out policies out of their own pocket and then forcing residual sub subsidy from government for those who did not and needed need health care he put high profit margin in the coffers 
of the healthcare industry. And so he did not, he, he rewarded business more than he rewarded the American people because anybody that even went on the exchange knows that the cost of healthcare is totally unrealistic. This is why you have grandmama who has to choose between going to the doctor, filling her prescription, having a procedure, or getting groceries because the healthcare industry is another example of how capitalism must come down because a handful of companies built the resources, the wealth of the American people in the name of healthcare when you compare it to other modern industrial countries around the world who offer the same and better healthcare for one third of the cost. America is one big sieve of exploitation. And so that's that's what we're talking about. Until you're conscious to the exploitation, where every time you say democracy, every time you say capitalism, every time you pledge allegiance to the flag, every time you sing the Star Spangled Banner, do you know what you're honoring? Do you know what that represents? Do you know what you are, what kind of self loathing you're engaged in when you honor these things? And so we've got to become uh, more informed. We've got to develop our ability to get critical insight on what's happening to us uh, in general, black, brown, red, and white. This is the plight of the American structure and the American system. It just happens to come down the heaviest on black people, but it's destroying everybody in America is being, uh, it, is, you know, when you embrace capitalism and democracy, you are humbling yourself to be the exploited. And what he really means, and, I, and, I, and I'm gonna say what he really means, and I'm gonna put it in a, Michael means what he means, and I'm gonna put it like this, greed. Greed. So greed is because when Mike, Mike is fiery and some people's like they listen and they think that you are totally anti-American, you hate, you blah, 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 you're angry, mm -hmm. etc. Somebody told me that. And I said, when you listen to Dr. King and you listen to Malcolm and you listen to uh, people who understand that the frustration and, and, and it comes from knowing that, you know, it's like you get mad if somebody eat up all the food, don't you, Earl? You call him, you greedy son of a gun. So greed is the really underpinning real uh, um, uh, monster in the room where resources, when you look at resources, and that's why I say what is driving and, and what my, my job and what I want to do and what I believe in is that, yes, all of that has to be exposed. When you see injustice anywhere, you should challenge it because if you're in love with the people, you're in love with humanity, you want to be better than those that you say and that have that has not been good to all people, then if you in the driver's seat, are you prepared to be any better? And if you are, are you willing to share? Well, if I could respond uh, to those uh, comments. You know, yes, I am angry. And I would suggest that the creator gave us the capacity for anger for a reason. Anger can be abused, uh, but anger can be properly used. And so anytime we have a history and a legacy that is, ra that, that is associated with our relationship to this society, if you as a black person don't have any sense of indig indignity, you don't have any sense of, of righteous indignation about what has happened and what has ceased to stop happening, since 1555, when we were brought here first in the holes of ships, then something has happened to you. You are infected with some type of mind virus 
that has incapacitated your natural responses that are connected with the first law of nature, which is self-preservation. So every living creature from ants to mice to roaches, all the way up to the bald eagles, the elephants, the leopards, the lions, the fish, everything, including the chicken and the cows that we eat every day, associated with their sense of survival, self-preservation is that impulse for anger because whenever your life force is threatened, the creator endows every living thing with a sense of defense of itself out of a sense of self-preservation. So I'm not angry just to be angry. Let, you, you, when you, if you are afraid when you see a black person angry, then that means something has happened to you that you don't realize. It, because it is only the people who wake up and understand what is happening to us that even understand what it, their right to be angry. You you go to school, you not you don't get afraid of white people that go to war with other white people because they're angry of how they're mistreating one another. It's something that has happened to us that when we see a sister like our sister in Maryland who was accosted by a SWAT team, a military force, because she has some traffic violations, but they came to her home unannounced, kicked in the door. She was in legal possession of a weapon, which the Constitution and the state laws of Maryland allowed her to own to defend herself, her home, her property, and her family. And then they murder her in cold blood with her babies in her arms. And many of us, even as black men, we are afraid to get angry over the murder of our women. Then I think you should be happy that there are a few of us who know how to be angry and have a sense of indignation about what's happening to black people. If you live in Nirvana already because you think you got a good salary and a nice home, then God bless you. But I work among black people every day. I go out in the gutter of black America and I see what how our people are forced to live because of bad education, miseducation, and social engineering. And so if you don't have a connection to that, then so be it. Maybe you need to listen to Rush Limbaugh or Sean Hannity or, or somebody like that. But this is called the New Black Leadership Coalition. You understand? And, 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 and we are expressing the whole black experience. And if you can't sort between my tone and my passion from the facts that, listen to the facts that we present to you. Listen to the evidence we present to you and deal with the facts and the evidence. But if we present something to you that's not factual, that's why you can call that number and point out that we're wrong, we're erroneous, we're irrational, we're, we're saying things that are, are, that are, there is no basis for us to speak these things because they're untrue. And if you can't do that, then you should hold yourself and find out why you're not angry. Well, that's why they got Jesse and Sharpton. <laughs> because if you know me as a person, I'm probably one of the biggest jokesters in private that you ever want to be around. I love to make people laugh and laugh myself. But when we come on air, we're here to talk about the real issues that are that our people are dealing with on a daily day, day to day basis. And we don't have time to play games with that because you in love with empire or you in love with power or you in love with the with the trappings that America has out there to keep us all distracted from the truth. And so that's why they didn't want you to like Bernie Sanders. Not that I'm in love with Bernie. I don't give a damn about Bernie. But Bernie represented an ideal that would bust up the exploitation of poor whites, poor blacks, poor Hispanics, Asians, and everybody in this society. And they did everything they could to keep Bernie out of your eyes and your ears so you would bite on Hillary, who is the devil in disguise, who is a pathological liar, who has a long track record of murder and exploitation of the citizens of the United States of America, but you love, now you're in love with Hillary, but eight years ago, you wanted to kill Hillary for standing in the way of Barack Obama, but you don't see your own irrational thought process and behavior that now you love a woman that eight years ago you hated because you were in love with somebody else. Height of irrationality. You heard him loud in the person Minister Michael 
Muhammad, the new black leadership and folks that are listening, you would say that we do need a checkup from the neck up. And what's going on right now, honestly, on most of what you listen to on the radio, you have to be honest, Steve is not going to give you this or Tom or Ricky Smiley or any even the other radio stations. You won't get it in this tone because they'll lose all the sponsorship they get. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be any sponsorship because folks want to be kept, you know, uh, sleep. Mm -hmm. And I get it. And, and, and but really, uh, there, there's a group of people who watch this, they fight up and the other people's like, oh my God, that sounds so radical. It sounds so, it just sounds like, again, he's very angry, he's mad. And, and they said that you, you didn't even accept Dr. King, so be quiet. That's right. The, Dr. King was considered a radical. That's right. You don't like the truth. And so it could come in a, with a roaring voice, or it could come in a soft voice. It makes no difference. I do, I do know about, trust me, volume, tone, and cadence. I study that. You know, I get it. But honestly, what you really want is something to be sugar-coated. Mm -hmm. You want it to be watered down, and you want to go along to get along. I do work with people of different hues, I work with white folks, I work with black people, I work with all people mm -hmm. that want to work and change the life and the, and the reality of poor people, suffering people. I make no apologies for doing that kind of work and I'm going to continue to do that kind of work. And I think you have to be open to hear a perspective that you should go and study. Look, and as you heard Minister Mike say, if you have issues with what comes out of his mouth, call 708-223-8953. Challenge and, it and, and, and bring and, and, a perspective. And just, and just let me add this to what you're saying. Keep going. Pro-black yeah. is not anti-white. Pro-black definitely is not anti-white. And I think what people really don't want is you. So I called this earlier. We get ready to get off the air. The reason I call this show about the, the the folks who are protesting and upset, and I said, it's like pissing in the wind, is what you just heard Mike say, is that we really don't want it like that. Mm -hmm. So we want people to say that's rain, mm -hmm. when it's really pissed. Yeah. <laughs> so we want to be tricked. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and, and, and at the end of the day, this is tough, unconditional love. Mm -hmm. Everybody know I'm in love. You cannot stop me from loving. You can't stop me from being. There's white people that I know when they see me, they go, hey, Greg, and I hug them mm -hmm. and embrace them That's back true. and won't ever stop. Mm -hmm. But what I won't ever do for black leadership, white leadership, any leadership, is that I'm not going to sit there with you and let you make up something that ain't true mm -hmm. and then people continue continue to live in this state mm -hmm. we should be angry and 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 really try to figure out why are we not making any progress mm -hmm. he said well who to blame on that mm -hmm. you cannot fix what's wrong with you unless the doctor tell you the truth mm -hmm. and if you don't know the truth you don't know how to treat what's wrong and whatever kind of disease or virus mm -hmm. or uh, problem that you have, you do need to know the foundation or the root of the problem. And, that, and what you heard Minister Michael talk about is the historical root of a mindset, of a problem, of a, a condition that didn't get here on its own and is not staying here like it's staying because there is a social orchestrated situation and you, you can't get mad at that. You should be mad at yourself if somebody tell you that the way you eat. I got some alkaline water right here. I'm drinking alkaline water. There are some people would say, come on, man, why are you drinking alkaline? Well, I did a little study. 
mm -hmm. on alkaline water. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm drinking. Mm -hmm. But you would say, what's wrong with just tap water? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with, mm -hmm. you know, the water that I buy for mm -hmm. 50 cents? Right. I would say that is a different quality if you go and study this. And, 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 and I'm making an analogy of what you just heard was alkaline. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, one of the things we we have been engineered psychologically to do as black people is we consider our own personal or family advancement as equal to the progress of our group. And what we don't understand is that everything in mass media, everything in education, everything in uh, Eurocentric religion, everything in business, all of these devices are used to advance the culture of white male supremacy as a group. And so until we understand what our great leaders have tried to get us to do, and that's connect and bond with the ideal that no matter if you pay me a hundred million dollars a year, but my, I can go in a, in a neighborhood on the south side of Chicago where little boys don't have shoes, they're playing in the mud, their mothers don't know how to feed them properly, their fathers are on the corner uh, uh, gang banging or drinking or not knowing how to be a father. All of these are the byproducts of a world that has engineered our own destruction. So we, just because you ride good, you sleep good, you live good, and you are happy, you go home and your wife and your children or whoever is there, you go home to your personal heaven, don't you understand that the overwhelming majority of them, you still have 60 to 70% of black men from 18 to 35 that do not have work and want work. So. Won't, don't you know how to look at the bigger picture and not measure everything about, look, I own my own home. I have the deed to my own home. I have the title to two automobiles that I own. So, you know, for all practical purposes, I could say everything is all right. Well, what, what reason do I have to be angry? You know, uh, I just got off of a, a plane uh, 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 where I paid no money to make a trip down south and back and ate at the Ritz Carlton and all these kinds. So if I just wanted to come on here and talk about my own personal stuff, then I could be a narcissistic idiot. But that doesn't do anything to a, to help the grievances of the average black person in America. And the problem with so many of us is you think because you got a bachelor's degree or a master's degree, Degree, or you got some status in some corporation where you bend over and kiss the butt, the proverbial butt of white folks, and they reward you with a little money, you think that the rest of us are crazy because we have some grievances in America. And that's the why you, many of you, do not defend Kaepernick and others who speak up on the behalf of black people because you dumb enough to believe that America has advanced black people in some real way. But you, you're just uninformed. And, 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 and your perspective needs to be uh, uh, updated and your consciousness needs to be awakened. Well, folks, we are wrapping it up here on intellectualradio.com. You will not, and hear me, hear me well, there's no other internet station on the planet that you can find and hear conversations like this. Nowhere on the planet. I'm talking about satellite radio, Sirius, whatever they call it. None of that. And definitely not the local stations at all. They can't do this. They have to have permission. And uh, if they do, many of them uh, will find themselves in trouble. But at the end of the day, it ain't about creating division. It's not about uh, hatred. It ain't about uh, disrespect. This is all about love, and and you know what I'm about, and and Minister Mike is by nature a preacher. He's a preacher, and so what you hear coming from him is like he's on his rostrum right now, preaching to. Me. I'm not a preacher, but I do preach. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, 
Thank you, Brother Earl, greatest producer on the planet right here, Intellectual Radio. And listen, y'all better tune in to Brother Ham, a list of shows. So go on the website, and those of you all that want an app that you can hear these shows right away, call Speak Spreaker, Spreaker, Spreaker. Anyway, love you, and call me if you need to reinterpret what Mike said. <laughs> <laughs> Peace and love. Peace and love.